With the introduction of patch 3.12 came a whole host of mining changes. So what a better time to update my mining guide for Star Citizen. Let's get into it. I think we have to start out with what ships and vehicles are capable of mining. The Misk Prospector is a solo miner that can carry 32 SCU of ore, and it's $155 for purchase on the website, or you can purchase it in-game for 2.06 million credits. It also rents for 55,000 credits per day, but can't change any of the components or customize it. The Argo Mole is a multi-crew miner with three lasers, three times the storage capacity of a Prospector at 96 SCU, it costs $315 to buy it on the website, or 5,130,500 Alpha UEC to purchase in-game. It is currently not available for rent either. Next is the Grey Cat ROC, which is a ground vehicle that mines medium-sized rocks that contain gems. It costs $55 on the website, or 172,000 Alpha UEC to purchase in-game, and it rents for $4,300 per day, but since you need another ship to carry this vehicle to locations to mine, a Cutlass will rent for 34420 Next is hand mining. This is just not as profitable as it was when I made the complete guide to hand mining over a year ago. You can go down to caves and gather some gems for a cool experience, but if you expect to get rich on this, you're mistaken. Okay, you've chosen your ship that you want to mine with. Now let's discuss how the actual mining mechanic works and it starts with scanning you press tab to enter scanning mode and right click to start a ping the longer you hold it the more powerful your ping will be when you find an item of interest it will be in a large holographic box fly towards it until you get a spinning animation in your scanning mode then you will left click to gather additional information on that item of interest and the only information you need to pay attention to is the number on the left. That is the percentage of the material that's in the rock. The number on the right, just ignore it. It's probably going to be gone in the future. So we found ourselves a rock that we'd like to mine. You're going to press M to get into mining mode. Then you will right click to switch modes from fracture mode or extraction mode. You're going to want to be on fracture mode to break up this rock until it's small enough to bring in and extract it into your ship. You'll left click to fire your mining laser and mouse wheel up to increase the power percentage and down to lower it. The left side of the circle is the power percentage of the laser. The right side is the amount of energy transferred into the rock. The goal is to get the power percentage into the green zone without crossing into the red and fill that green zone up until the rock breaks. On the left side of the circle is your consumables menu. Since the mining changes, these have become way more essential. To use them, the default keybinds are Alt-1, Alt-2, and Alt-3, starting from the top and making your way to the bottom. We'll touch on these in more detail when I go over consumables and ship loadouts. Once you break the initial rock, you will notice an orange hue around the smaller pieces and maybe even a purple hue. Orange means the rock is too big to extract, so it needs to be broken down further. Purple means it's the proper size for extraction. After you've broken down the orange chunks into purple, right click to move into extraction mode and then left click to begin that extraction. You can now also see on the right side the cargo hut element that shows exactly how much of each mineral you have in your ship, as well as how full your ship's cargo hold is. This makes decisions for which rocks to extract way more informed and is a welcome update in 3.12. Now for vehicle mining with the Grey Cat ROC, there are a few different steps here. First, you need a ship that can carry the rock. For me, the Cutlass is perfect, but you can use a Freelancer, a Mercury Star Runner, or even a Carrick if you want. You are exposed to the elements, so you need an environment suit. I recommend the Pembroke suit, as you can buy it on the refinery decks. The scanning process is the same, of course, and when you find the rock or rocks you want to mine, land the ship flat and get your rock out. Press M for mining mode, and the process is the same. The main difference here is it's just one break and you're done. It breaks into a bunch of gems that you can vacuum up by switching to extraction mode with a right click. Hand mining is pretty similar. When you find a hand mineable rock, you can leave your ship with your environment suit on. You also need a multi-tool though. 
You could purchase this at many different locations, but the refinery decks have them as well, so you might as well pick them up when you pick up your environment suit. Don't forget to get the orbit attachment as well, because this is the attachment to the multi-tool that allows you to mine. You'll equip it in your PMA on your Moby Glass. Don't forget to add the attachment. To mine, walk up to the rock, press 4 on your keyboard to get your tool out. Right-click to scan the rock to get the proper UI information up, and the rest is the same. Just stay in the green zone on the left side. After you break them, press F to interact, and click store to put them in your backpack. As you can see here, this takes forever, and this is why I do not recommend hand mining in patch 3.12. Next, you probably want to know what to mine. There are six main ores that I like to pick up. Quantanium, Vexalite, Boraz, Terranite, Laranite, and Agrisium. I only like to mine rocks that have at least one of these minerals at 10% or above, as you will end up with a good amount of pure pieces. Just to note, every 100 mass equals 2 SCU. When I break down to purple, I only take in 90 plus percent with the exception being that if you have very little cargo space left and you just want to finish your job and head to the refinery, then you could pick up something that's less, of course. For the Grey Cat Rock, I only mine Hadonite. Dolivine is just too hard to mine, too time consuming, and is not worth it. A big note here, Quantanium is volatile, and there will be a timer in the cargo HUD element when in mining mode. You have 14 minutes from the first extraction to make it to the refinery to either sell or start a refinery job before it explodes. So where do you find these elements? Hurston L3 and possibly other L3 Lagrange points are great places, it seems, for Quantanium. I don't know if it's anecdotal, but I'm finding a lot of dense Quantanium rocks there. The downsides here are they are easy to get to, so piracy is going to be an issue, and you get rocks that are not scannable sometimes when you're mining in asteroid belts. Microtech and its moons, they basically have all the best minerals, including quantanium in large chunks as well. For Hurston, Aberdeen and Ariel seem pretty ripe with Bexalite, and the other moons are pretty good with Laranite and Agrisium and some other uh, valuable materials as well. Ariel is also great for Greycat ROC mining as it's high in Hadonite and it's also quite flat. Although Aberdeen has the most dense Hadonite nodes anywhere in the game, it is quite rocky and it's difficult to find a flat area to land your ship and drive your rock out. Around Crusader, Daymar, and Yella both have Quantanium and at least one other mineral in the top five. The downsides of these planets and moons are basically just that the wind blows a lot and it's going to blow you around while you're trying to mine, which can cause increased instability. So that includes the Microtech moons and Hurston and Aberdeen as well. Next up is Aaron's Halo, which is located between the orbit of Delamar and Crusader. It has a dense asteroid belt, but like the L station, sometimes the rocks are not scannable, and it can be a time waster. The plus here is that you are impossible to find while mining, so it's a more relaxed and chill experience. So now you have a full load of ore, and you want to know where to sell it. Well, now you have two choices. You can either sell it or refine it. For selling, you can still sell at all the refinery kiosks from previous patches, but now they're also located on the refinery decks. In 3.12, all mine material now sells for half of what it sold in 3.11 and previous patches. I put a worksheet in the comment section down below that covers all unrefined and refined prices in the description labeled Mining Worksheet. Now, for refining, it will make up that difference, but the trade-off is it costs money and it takes time. Again, the refined prices are listed in the worksheet in the description. There are five refineries located at Lagrange points in the Stanton system. To get to them, take the in-station transit elevators and then follow the signs for service. They're at Microtech L1, Hurston L1 and L2, Arcorp L1 and Crusader L1. So how does refining work? There are five methods of refining, all giving different results in three categories. Amount of time they take, yield, which is how much refined ore you get, and the cost in Alpha UEC. All five methods are valid choices based on your situation, how much time you have, the expected value of refined ore, and if you are trying to squeeze every ounce out of your mining runs. First, choose which ship you want to start the process with, and then choose a method. The Cormac method is low yield, fast, and costs somewhere in the middle from the others. 
Pyrometric Chromalysis offers high yields. It's pretty slow, but not the slowest, and it costs a lot. The Gaskin process offers medium yields. It's fast, but at a high cost. Electrocerolysis is the same yield as Gaskin. It's a bit slower, and it also costs a little bit less. Dink's Solventation is the way I like to go because I play so often. It offers high yields. It's extremely slow. Jobs often last more than a day, and it costs next to nothing. Keep in mind, each refinery has bonuses for all different types of ore. Depending on what you have in your hold, you may want to choose one refinery over another to squeeze out a few more units to sell. Again, this is part of the sheet linked in the description down below. To sell refined ore, choose a cargo ship that can carry what has been refined and bring it to the Trade and Development Division on Arcorp, Microtech, or the Central Business District on Hurston. It is a long process, but a rewarding one. Now that we have the basics out of the way, I want to dive a little bit deeper, and we're going to start with lasers and consumables, and then we can put some builds together for you guys. So starting out with lasers, there are six different lasers which all have varying statistics. The Arbor is the stock laser, and this had a big bump in terms of power in 3.12, which now allows it to mine many more rocks. I would stick to some of the mid-range stuff with the larger green zones when using this particular laser. Klein is easily the most useless laser, as every other one has something more positive than this one. Instability is wild now, where you can get some really large jumps, so anything that raises it is typically not a good idea. The Lancet was the laser that got the largest buff, and honestly may be the best laser in the game right now. It lowers instability and resistance so much that when paired with the right consumables, it can break anything it comes across. This laser is also a must-have on a mole or in a group setting, as it acts essentially like a consumable itself. Helix was the king in previous patches and had a pretty big nerf. The lack of resistance dampening makes it quite difficult to mine some larger rocks, but again, paired with the right consumables, anything can be broken with this guy as well. The Hofsteed is basically just a budget helix, so I really don't recommend it unless you are pretty broke. The impact is the most interesting. The resistance dampening works perfectly in synergy with the helix, so in a multi-crew or fleet situation, this is pretty useful and cool, but make sure to have a third laser that is a lancet to help improve the shatter damage as well as kind of the lack of instability and resistance that these two lasers provide. Next up is consumables. Consumables are attachments that you can put on your mining laser that temporarily give that laser different statistics. They can be purchased at multiple locations, but refineries are the best spots since you likely would be frequenting them anyway. The Brant lowers instability by 75%, so for rocks really high instability, this is a big help. It's also a must-have with the Helix laser, and it lasts a minute and a half. The Torpid lowers your resistance and helps you mine rocks that might be a little bit too big for you, and this one lasts a minute and a half as well. The Stampede lasts a minute and charges rocks 125% faster if you're in either the green zone or red zone. So make sure you stay in the green or you're dead. The Rhyme is a consumable that you would use to reverse an overcharge. It drops the charge level of the rock by 50% instantly. This will likely get you out of the red and the green and let the rock just cool off. The lifeline consumable is similar, but instead of dropping the power, it drops the charge rate to nearly zero. So if you're in the red, it will give you time to get down to a safe zone and let the rock just cool off. It can also be used to counter the insane shatter damage that comes with the helix and impact combo. Optimum is pretty simple and it makes the green zone 75% larger. If you have a build that doesn't lower instability enough, or you're not sure how to judge your surge, you can make great use of this. But note, it only lasts 20 seconds, so you should spend some time in the green zone before triggering this consumable. The aforementioned surge is the must-have in all of my solo builds. This will raise the power level of a rock by 40% instantly. If you can't get into the green zone, you can surge your way up and combo this with the optimum to make it easier to hit that green zone since it's so much larger. Next up, I'd like to recommend you some ship builds. Starting out with prospector builds, the first build is what I call the novice build. This is for somebody who is maybe a little bit more new to mining. The laser that I would put on it is the Lancet. 
the instability and resistance dampening is second to none. You will be able to crack most rocks with this. The consumables I put on it are two times surge. You're gonna use a ton of these when you come across rocks that are above 6K mass because you simply don't have the power with the Lancet to break them on your own. The other consumable slot is taken up by an optimum. This will make it easier to get into the green zone when using a surge. It's possible to replace this with the Stampede if you're really good at judging where the Surge endpoint would be, and then you can kind of charge up the green zone a lot faster. My next build is what I'm calling the Expert build, if you're a lot more experienced with mining and have done it in previous patches. The mining laser we'll use is the Helix laser. You will have an easier time charging rocks with this laser, but you have to deal with higher instability and resistance issues, since the laser doesn't lower them as much as the Lancet. For consumables, I start out with a brand. This is a must have due to the lack of instability dampening with the Helix now. You can get yourself in the green, pick this on and balance off nicely. The next consumable slot is an optimum. Similar to the brand, this is to combat that instability and resistance problem. Once you're in the green, it's easier to break and you need less power. So the larger the green zone, the quicker you can get there and the easier it is to stay inside. And lastly, Surge. Even though this laser is the strongest in terms of power, certain rocks are just impossible to crack with 100% power, so a surge is necessary to aid with these rocks. Again, this is best to combo with an optimum. Torpid is an option to swap with this, but you need to skip some rocks that you just can't charge alone, so I don't recommend it. Next up for ship builds, we will provide an Argo Mole build. This one I call the Balanced Synergy build. This build is built around the idea that the person in the main laser has experience and is helping along newish players. And the side lasers are playing almost exclusively a support role as everyone shoots the same rock at the same time to make it as easy as possible. The center laser will be the helix. This is your captain laser. They will power the rock up and down and direct the other lasers when to use consumables and how much to power themselves. Consumables for the center laser will be lifeline times two. These are both here because the captain should be the one most aware of the laser power and be able to act quickly to save the rock from an overcharge. I'll also add an optimum on there just because it's useful with a group. For the left laser, we'll use the impact simply because this laser synergizes well with the helix since it adds more resistance dampening and you may not need to use a consumable as often. For consumables on this laser, we'll use two time stampedes Fire those when in the green zone to speed up the process, and this can be said by the captain or just noticed by the person on the laser. Again, we have an optimum on here as well. It's just good to have these for all occasions. For the right laser, we're gonna use the Lancet. This laser is really just there to make sure that we lower resistance and instability, and it is fully a support laser. Once again, we'll have Stampede times two and optimum for the same reason. The last thing I want to talk about here is stealth. If you look at the Urkel.games links, you'll notice that all of my builds linked in the description are running mostly stealth components. Face Cutlet, a really great Twitch streamer, I'll leave his link in the description, found that you can find ships with high signatures at over 100 kilometers away. Because of this, I run as many stealth components as possible, and when I'm not actively mining, I turn off my laser in the MFD and it makes me essentially invisible. I also ping at 4x or 8x instead of the big wide 1x, because if you are pinging with the 1x, you can be seen from a very far distance as well, and those smaller, more narrow pings don't show you as often. Well, I think that about covers it. I spent a ton of hours on researching this video, and it's still early in the patch. Let me know what you thought about this guide, and if you have any additional questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Share this video with anyone you think can get use out of it, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and happy mining.